Matt and Finn here from the Woodland Shrimps YouTube channel. It's late March and all the spring plants are just appearing in the hedgerows. So we've come out for a walk to brush up on our IDing skills. There'll be some wild edibles and some poisonous ones too. So join us and see what we can find and identify. A word of caution though, never eat anything that you find in the wild unless you're 100% confident you know what it is. Never munch on a hunch or you might be. Right, Finn, this is probably something that everyone will be familiar with. Yeah. So what are these? Nettles. These are common stinging nettles, aren't they? First thing we should say is why are these called stinging nettles? Because they can sting you. Yes, yeah, so they, they're covered in tiny little hair-like needles that inject a poison in if you brush against them. And then obviously you'll get almost like a little welty swelling and it's going to be painful, isn't it? So we're not going to take off any of these now, but you can do if you harvest these with a pair of gloves, you can make some herbal nettle tea out of it. They're also really high in protein. So what you can do, you can harvest them and either boil them or waft them through a flame and that will remove the stinging element and then you can put them in a salad, you can put them in a stew. Now is there anything else we can see? Goose grass. Goose grass, here we go. So what do you know about goose grass? They stick to fabric. Yeah. Shall we have a go? Perfect. That's because they're covered in tiny little hairs. Now goose grass, so called because geese like to eat it. Another common name is cleavers. Now this is a spring edible you really want to sort of introduce some heat because all the little hooks that cause it to grip onto your clothes aren't particularly pleasant in your mouth and your throat and actually do you know Finn they come from the same family as coffee and the fruits later in the year can be dried ground and it's actually a coffee substitute which has lower caffeine content we've never tried that but maybe that's something we might try this year Lord later. The ladies there as well that's a tiny little one so maybe we'll find a better example of that later that's a great spot and actually, while we're here, what's this stuff here, Finn? Hawthorn, and these bits are edible. And hawthorn, they they grow the leaves, then they blossom. Yeah, so that's the difference. And so what's the other one? Blackthorn, but they first they blossom, then they grow the leaves. Exactly. Great knowledge, Finn. That's brilliant. Right then, let's crack on. So in here, Finn, these really green leaves. What's that in there? Dog's mercury. It's poisonous. It is a poisonous one, isn't it? So you can see that it's got these fairly insignificant flowers. I think the old wives tale is that they reckon dogs used to eat it to make them sick, but it is poisonous to both dogs and humans. So it's definitely one that isn't for the food table, but nevertheless, it's something that you see bursting out the ground at this time of the year. And it's a sign that the area that's grown in has been undisturbed for a long, long time. And actually look at this down here. So this is quite interesting. What's this? Lords and ladies. Lords and ladies. Now this, there's a couple of variants of lords and ladies. There's either the all green leaf or the green one with the purple spots. And we can see that this one is the one with the purple spots, isn't it? So what shape is that leaf? Arrow shape. So it's the shape of an arrowhead, isn't it? So that's one of the identifying. And what's the other way of identifying it? There are lots of other plants that have arrowheads, but the veins don't come right to the end. Yeah, they don't come to the edge of the leaf. Stops them. But interestingly, this one, you can see that the flower is starting to form there. Now this flower head is a really interesting one for people to read up on at home because it basically creates a hollow shoot and part of the flower, the bit that sticks up, is actually like really smelly so it attracts insects. The insects crawl down but it's actually a trap. So they go down into the lower part, tiny hairs block their exit so they fly around, get covered in pollen and eventually the hairs wilt and so the fly can escape and move on but it's actually trapped for a period of time to make sure that it gets enough of the pollen on to be able to go on and do its business on the next one which is just fascinating but that is is that edible or poisonous poisonous it is poisonous yeah it's deadly not deadly but actually it contains crystals within the leaf so what you'll find is it's if you try and chew some of that leaf, it almost feels like paper cuts in your mouth. So it's so unpleasant and uncomfortable, you probably wouldn't get as far as swallowing it. But the key with this one, these are obviously quite developed growth, but what you'd be really careful of, we're going to talk about one garlic smelling plant, hopefully, if we find it. But what's the, what's the main garlic? Wild garlic. Wild garlic, ramsons, yeah. Early wild garlic growth and early lords and ladies growth are very similar. Really dark green leaf sprouting from the ground. So you've got to be careful that you don't get the one mixed up with the other because that would be a pretty nasty surprise in your wild garlic pesto. 
okay so interestingly that's the purple splodged one and right along here you can see this is one of the ones that are just the green leaf without the purple fantastic stuff in good knowledge there well spotted and here we can see a little bit more hawthorn. hawthorn these are edible yeah do you want to try one what do they taste like they taste plain but then they taste of plants they <laughs> taste of plants yeah so these are small examples but what's this uh bramble shoots yeah these are bramble shoots so what grows on brambles later in the year what's the fruit blackberries. blackberries yeah but at this stage these young shoots although they've got tiny hairs on the stalks they're actually they're not spiky at all really so you can pick those and almost treat them like broccoli so you can fry them in a little bit steam of butter them. you could steam them yeah add them to a stew so that's a really valuable resource if you're out in the wild needing to survive because there is absolutely loads of them i mean they're a bit near the ditch and next to the roadside so we'll see whether we could find some fresher stuff for you to try but we'll keep hunting on so it's just so plentiful at the moment oh interestingly what's this here foxgloves that is foxglove there so we're going to compare foxglove with another type of plant primrose that, primrose that we're quite keen to find mm -hmm. okay lots more goose grass through there as and well two catkins but we'll find a better spot for them yeah and actually we've seen a lot of green but we haven't seen much color yet finn but these in amongst loads of goose grass dog violets dog violets well done so they are beautiful little flowers aren't they but not one we're particularly looking at today but seeing them is always a, a pleasure let's crack on good spot then a solitary primrose which is unusual because often they're in large clumps here we go then so this is what finn primroses and what do you know about primroses um you can eat every single part so the flower the roots and the leaves and the leaves are very similar to foxgloves so yeah and if you get them mixed up you got well, yeah that's right luckily because when you've got young foxgloves leaves they can look a lot like the primrose leaves now obviously once the primrose is in flower you know it's definitely a primrose because it's got the yellow although you can get some purpley different variants from there once the foxglove is in flower which is too early for them at this time of the year you're not going to get that mixed up but when neither plants are in flower they look very similar so you've got to be really careful now foxgloves contain a chemical called digitalin which slows the heart rate so much so that as you mentioned earlier it could be game over okay so it's imperative that again if you're eating from the wild you're 100 percent sure you know what you're taking do you have to cook them before? It's sensible to cook all wild edibles because again you don't know whether there's poo wee exactly. bacteria. Yeah, exactly. Blood. If you cook them, you're gonna kill off that stuff, aren't you? So you feel your flat thorn. Can do if you want. Yeah, so this is what fin? Blackthorn. And that what fruit does the blackthorn produce later in the year? Oh what is it? What's it? Is it black currants? No, slow. That's so blackthorn slow. berries are called slows. And what do, what have we done with those in the past? We've made slow gin. Yeah, and a Chris, yeah, Christmas treat. And what are these, Finn, here? Catkins from oh, a hazel tree. Hazel catkins. Now it's quite late in the year to still find these, but these are edible. So these, because they contain pollen, they're a really good source of protein, weight for weight. But you can pop them in the oven, you can roast them slightly and sprinkle them on your granola on your cereal pop them on a top of salads for a little bit of crunch but these are the last of the last really could you could, would bees collect the pollen from them they would it's a really early source of food the pollen for bees and here's another one on our hit list fin isn't it so what's this called garlic mustard garlic mustard so that is a heart-shaped leaf with serrated teeth on the edge a little bit later in the season this will grow probably 60 70 centimeters off the ground and have white flowers now with garlic mustard what's a way of testing that it is what it is you can smell it just smell it well you need to take it off doesn't smell well it smells a little bit actually how do you activate that smell you need to like squish it or scrunch it off and then it's not as potent as wild garlic it's not is it but it's still it's still a really pleasant one so if you if you find it in the laneways give it a give it a crush give it a sniff you can definitely smell the garlic. 
but these hedgerows are just abundant with greenery. Ah, oh, here we go. This is something else we're looking for, Finn, which aren't the best examples because what is it not doing at the moment? It's not flowering. And the sun's not out. Exactly. So these are the flowers here. This is what? Do you remember what this one's called? Oh, uh, uh, it's not wood sorrel because that's a white flower. Yeah. So it is lesser celandine. Lesser celandine. Now I'll chop some footage that we shot on another day of these flowers when they're open. They're a beautiful yellow flower, heart-shaped arrow leaves. But again, these are abundant, particularly in hedgerows or damp woodland. They cover the floor. They're a beautiful sight at this time of the year. But yeah, so lesser celandine, part of the buttercup family, along with wooden enemy, which I would love to find some of those today, but I don't think we will somehow. Right, great stuff then. So that's another one on our hit list. Nettles, um, pin roses, goosegrass, ivy. Yep. Bit of rose there. Um, oh, there's some more that lettuce selling died. What's this? From last year? Wrapping. Wrapping. Is it? Yeah, here. Well done, Finn. So how can we identify this wood sorrel? So they have little purple purple veins in the flower. And what and size? How many petals? Have a count of how many petals? Five. five. So there's five petals, which are what colour? White. With, you mentioned... Purple veins. Yeah. With three love heart shaped leaves. Exactly. Now, interestingly, so those... Those three are spread out, but how are those ones there different? They're closed. They're closed. The sun's not out. Exactly. So yeah, so you can see now totally edible, the flowers and the leaves, but it contains oxalic acid, which can, in larger quantities, can affect kidney function. And certainly if anyone's got any form of kidney disease or underperforming kidneys, this is definitely one to avoid. But they are a classic of damp hedgerows, undisturbed ground that has been left in situ for a long time you'll most likely find wood sorrel we can't taste this because it's next to the roadside and obviously a lot of dirt and muckle stuff would have been thrown up onto it but it tastes like apple peel or a bit citricky sort of lemony taste that is a phenomenal spot well done thin and again just in this little area this is a perfect example of what we're talking about so wood sorrel dog mercury nettles goose grass um ivy so it's absolute abundance in this tiny little area here. Great stuff in, well done, well spotted on that sorrel, that's amazing. Look what's over here, Finn. So this is young what? Fox gloves. Young fox gloves. And that's what we were talking about that can look quite a lot like... Primrose. Yeah. You'll never get them with the flowers simultaneously simply because they flower at different times of the year. Fox glove in the summer, whereas primrose in the spring. We'll do some side-by-side -side footage of the primrose leaf and the fox glove leaf on both surfaces to give you an idea of the difference. And here, Finn, right in the sun is what? Gauze. Gauze. And these have yellow flowers. That's are edible. And they're edible. And people say they taste of coconut. Yeah? Can we give them a bash? Mm. What do you think? A little bit of coconut. Got to be a bit careful. This can look a lot like broom. Same yellow flowers, but gauze is the one that's covered in these horrible spikes, which make it lethal. Right then, Finn, let's head back along this riverside and see whether there's anything else we can find. Back across this rickety bridge. Right then, so we're gonna leave this one here. So I hope you've enjoyed it. We do quite a few of these walks, so we're keen to bring you along 
So if you have enjoyed it, please like and comment. And if you are considering subscribing, that would be amazing because any support we can get for the channel is really appreciated. So without further ado, that just leaves me to pass you on to Finn to say cheerio. See you on the next one. Bye.